Good afternoon, everyone. And welcome to our session. So you are here for the developing numeracy using Just Too Easy for Key Stage 2 students. So my name is Nikki Kimball. I'm one of the educational consultants at Just Too Easy. Um, I deliver the majority of the online training. So let's just outline some session housekeeping bits and pieces. It is a 45 minute session. Uh, questions can be asked via the chat. So we've done the chat test. It's working. Uh, so please feel free. I do have it open on my second screen. Please feel free to add any questions as we go along. And I'll either try and answer them as we go along or I will save them for the end of the session. Um, the session is being recorded and will be hosted on YouTube under the webinars playlist. And also I will do a Q&A session as always at the end of the training. So you can ask me any questions that you might have. Doesn't even have to be maths related. Could just be general, just to easy questions, you, you know, but having issues with certain things. So please feel free. I will open up the, uh, the floor at the end of the session. Now, in terms of what we're going to cover, we're going to look at how and why you should use digital tools to support numeracy skills in your classroom. And then I'm going to focus on which just too easy tools you can use to support numeracy in your classroom. So as part of that is we're going to have an overall example and look at the tools and activities that we've got. So I'm going to be focusing on JIT branch, JIT mix, database, J2 code, TT and SATS blast importing existing worksheets using J2 PDF and measuring tools in J2 Create. So we're going to focus on angles in this session. Um, and I'm also going to do a resource library activity showcase. So I have got a huge amount of resources to show you at the end of the session. We have updated quite a few recently. Um, so please stick around for that. And then a Q&A session at the end. So lots to get through in 45 minutes. Now, just a very quick intro. I know the vast majority of you looking at the chat are joining us from Northern Ireland. Um, now the tools are a cloud-based store cloud-based system. So we are accessible via any device anywhere, as long as it has an internet browser and an internet connection, you'll be able to access the tools. Now to get onto our site, you can go either through your managed service. So there'll be a lot of you from Northern Ireland, there might well be some from Wales and Scotland as well. So you can find us within my school. So that's for my C2K colleagues out there. You can find us in my school under the view all tab. And then we're under the online learning tab in hub. You can find us in hub as well. We are, we are quite central to the hub provision. Uh, so you'll find us if you are a Welsh teacher and also some parts of Scotland will be able to access us through the Glow Manage service. So you'll find us on the Glow Launchpad if that is the case. That is Perth and Kinross, Aberdeenshire and a couple of other areas that escape me, Renfrewshire um, and possibly Stirling. Um, but you can go direct to us by going to j2e.com and you can click on EA, Hub or Glow, depending on which uh, service you're joining us from and use those credentials to log in. OK, um, so hopefully you'll be able to log in. <laughs> now, just a quick little intro about why you should consider using digital tools to develop numeracy. So the digital tools can provide an individualised learning environment with personalised levels of support and scaffolding for the students. So you can differentiate activities. You can set up your own teaching groups to allow you to differentiate certain activities. Um, there's various activities within the um, library as well as creating your own. Um, so you can really personalise each child's learning environment. The tools incorporate a range of different modalities, so audio, visual, um, microphone, photos, uh, the children can create their own content to demonstrate their learning and understanding. So, you know, we can use this for all sorts of learning, um, learning methods. That's not the right word. Um, learning styles. It's been a long day. Um, feedback. So teachers can provide structured feedback using the learning conversations in the child's pupil files. OK, so you always have access to every pupil's content that they create. The use of technology helps to reduce inequalities and promotes inclusion. So you can put those accessibility tools in place for the children that need it. Um, and you can set the same activity with different levels of support 
integrated into it. So it really doesn't highlight the children that need that extra support um, that a physical object sitting on their desk might. It offers students a safe space to see, explore and interact with mathematical concepts so they can practice things. Um, and we're going to look at a lot of things like games based learning, um, where the children can then consolidate that knowledge that they've learned in class. And then finally, technology integration can influence students' motivation and engagement levels. And actually, there's quite a lot of research. If you look at research papers that um, prove this, um, that you know the children could be doing exactly the same thing that they would be doing with sort of pen and paper in class but they're far more motivated so again games based learning is a good example tt blast practicing their times tables children generally aren't particularly motivated to do that but with a games based learning uh, theme that can provide a lot more motivation for the children to engage with that particular learning now i did mention it at the beginning um all of our training is recorded and is accessible through our YouTube channel. So just to Easy TV. Now within that, there is a um, webinars 2024-25 playlist. This will be, I will um, export this onto YouTube a bit later. So that'll be available from this evening, uh, ready for you to view if you want other colleagues to have a look at this. There's also various live lessons um, so I keep saying this is a new concept. It's really not. We've been doing it for about a year now. So there is a bank of live lessons. Uh, so that is where I will teach your class for you uh, on all aspects of the Just Too Easy tool suite. So there's JIT Mix, there's uh, J JIT Branch activities, there's um, Animate, J to Create. So please have a look at those. We do them every other Tuesday and there is a list on our um, website of all of the training uh, and live lessons that we're delivering. So have a look, subscribe, and then you'll be notified when anything new comes up. Right, we're going to start with the games based learning. So for this, we're going to look at TT Blast, which is your times tables. And we're also going to look at Sats Blast, which is this one. So Sats Blast is more of a generalized uh, maths activities. So whereas times tables very much focus on your times tables, Sats Blast is more um, fractions, uh, percentages, addition, subtraction, multiplication, all of the math skills. So let's have a look at these. They are within the J2 Blast tool suite. Uh, there's also Spell Blast, which we're not going to look at today, but that is there. It's TT Blast, Sats Blast, Key Stage 1, 2 and 3. So let's have a quick look at TT Blast to start with. Now this is a noisy app. Uh, you are forewarned. Um, so if you are doing this in class as an activity in your maths lesson, either encourage them to turn the sound down or invest in some headphones. <laughs> um, so all the Blast games have a, quite a similar interface, a similar format. So they have two areas. They have the go live area and the have a practice area. So let's click on the have a practice area. The children can choose their own level. Um, so it starts very easily on the two times tables, goes up and you can see here we've got even things like time tables and division in this one. Um, I'm going to be kind to myself and I'm going to go for two, five and ten times tables. So I can click continue and it's going to prompt me to um, answer a question. Uh, they can use the keypad up here. So that's very handy for your iPads, your touchscreen devices, the smaller devices, or they can use the keyboard as well. Um, so good for, you know, their understanding of how to use the keyboard, um, finding where the numbers are so they can hit, she says, oh, maybe they can't. It's not working for some reason. There we go. So you can do both. They do get points per um, question that they answer correctly. So that is how you will end up with your class leaderboard, your school leaderboard and the world leaderboard. So they do get points every time they play. That is placed over all time and also a place over seven days. So you can keep tabs on what's going on. Then they've also got the go live area. So this will match them against three other children around the world. Uh, they cannot communicate with those other players. Um, so don't worry about, you know, it's completely e safe. Oh, there we go. Um, and the idea is they, they try and complete this as quickly as they can. And there we go. OK, um, so that is the go live area. Then you will gather data from that. So as the children practice more and more, 
I'm using this little graph button here. This is where you can access the data. There is a printable blast certificate. Uh, you get a nice little overview here. So we can see Mary's done really well. She's got a score of 100%. Mary's answering three questions correctly. Just Mary, Mary, Mary. Um, but we can change the period. So over the last year, so that's given me more in-depth information. So I've got three children here that got um, 100%. Again, you can click these printable blast certificates, you can print them out um, and add the children's details into them. But as a maths lead in particular, if you want to have a look at the data, you can choose a specific class. So let's have a look at Digital Leaders Day. So that is my one teaching group. I can see they've all had a little go here. And I can choose a specific user. So DL2 is not doing too well. So I can look at DL2 and that's showing me that they've had a go at the eight times tables and actually they got two incorrect. So they're really not doing too well at all. Uh, and they haven't practiced since February. So that's probably part of the part of the issue is that they, they're not practicing. Um, so that's really nice. Gives you a lot of insight into how each child is doing. SAT Blast, as I said, is very similar. Um, the only difference is really that they don't go live, they take a test. So I'd recommend that the children just use the practice area um, until the end of the key stage. And that's when you think about having the take a test area. So they have a practice. Again, they can choose their level. So, um, so adding and subtracting two digit numbers and ones. And then it goes all the way up to adding and subtracting decimals, multiplying decimals, squares and cubes. Uh, so maths that's far beyond my my level um, and then we can click continue so level four so there we go and again they get points every time they I really had to think about that one <laughs> every time they play they get points and again you get that data same as we did in TT Blast um, and they can take a test and that's going to tell them paper one they've got 30 minutes to complete it and there we go And if they do it incorrectly, it will prompt them so they can try again and it's going to skip on to the next question. I think with the test, if they get more than I think it's either three or five answers incorrect, it will then end the test. So they don't just keep going and going and going. They do have to reach a certain level of accuracy to keep going through the rest of the test. OK, so that is our games based learning um, provision. Um, so please have a look at those. Now we're going to start off with JIT branch. So this is part of our infant toolkit. Um, certainly in, in the English maths curriculum, this is kind of the end of year three, beginning of year four. Um, but some schools teach it in different year groups. I, I saw a planning earlier with it being taught in a year two class, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so it allows you to add in certain aspects of data to then um, use sorting questions to sort into a branching database. So this is actually, these are both activities that you can find in the library. So this is a Christmas based one, sorry to use the C word, but it's it's inching closer and closer. Um, so you can, if you've got a Christmas theme that you're doing next, uh, next month, there is one already made that they can use as an example and replicate. And this is a guess who game. Um, so I think this would be a really interesting one to do with some older students where they can take photos of, you know, either classmates or family members or just maybe famous people, for example, and then use sorting questions um, to sort that into a guess who game. So let's have a look at branch. It is, as I said, within the JIT toolkit. Now, JIT is um, a toolkit of eight tools within the same toolkit. Um, and branch is this lovely purple tab here uh, and the surround of the page changes colour so you know which students are off doing a painting instead of their branching database. Then you can choose a background. Now personally I prefer to have a blank background but you know if you're doing it around a certain theme you could choose a background to reflect that theme. I'm going to choose blank um, and then you can add pieces of data into the branching database to then sort. So we've got various clip art um, library so you could choose dinosaurs for example maybe you're sort of classifying da dinosaurs um, fairy tales Halloween activities there is a Christmas one uh, I quite like doing the mini beasts so let's add in I'm going to just click on the piece of data and that will add that onto my branching database there we go I'm going to add just a few 
Now, if you add one by mistake, just hover over it and you've got that bin option there and that will remove that. Now, you do also have alternative options. So you can add in um, images that you've searched on the web. So, you know, if it's something, a, a specific topic that you're looking at, that there isn't a clip art library. So we could look for mini beasts. There we go. Um, so you could have examples. So let's look for a worm, for example. And you can add that onto your branching database. So it can be photographs, not just clip art. Um, there is a simple mode and an advanced mode. So the advanced mode allows you to add a title and a description. So what I would recommend is you visit this, you know, in the first first instance, so maybe year three, year four. And certainly I think in the English curriculum, it's then revisited in the science curriculum in around year five or year six, which is your P6s and sevens. So you could then use the advanced mode once you revisit it for the second time. Um, and the instance I would, or example that I would provide would be that to in Involve it in like a research project. So the students could find out factual information to add into the description. So it could be, I don't know, habitat, um, how much it weighs, um, I don't know, how long it lives, what it eats, that kind of thing. So you can add some information to this description box and then use that information to then formulate the questions, the sorting questions. Um, so that will be a good example of an activity. But for this example, I am going to keep it simple and stay in the simple mode. But they both work in the same way. So then I would go to the sort function. OK, so I've only got four pieces of data. I think you can add up to 20. So you can make it a very substantial branching database. So I'm going to just add a very simple question. Can I fly? OK, so you're going to drag the ones that applies to on the left. And the ones that it doesn't apply to on the right, you can get the children to record that question as well. So that's just another element of you know, ICT competency. So they could record an audio about a soundbite. They do also have text to speech built into this. So if they need it, they can click on that and it will say uh, this bit of um, text up here and then we click OK and then I'm going to say do I have a stinger? I'm sure there must be some technical word for that but there we go and then oh um do I have and Antenna. Now that is not spelled correctly. Question mark. So I'll say yes and no and then click OK. So there we go. We've got our branching database. Now the children can click on the text to speech for each question and that will say. Can I fly? Each question out loud. Um, they can play that particular um, branching database. Now they could be thinking of a different item. So I'm going to highlight the caterpillar. So I'll say, can I fly? No. Now it could be that they're thinking of something completely different. So they could say, is this answer correct? No. And then it will prompt them to choose a new item. So they can add new items. So let's find something that can't fly. There we go. And then it's going to prompt us to, to create a new question. So we're going to say, do I have a shell? And there we go. We've added a whole new branch into our branching database. So they can keep going and going and going and keep broadening their, their branching database. Um, and that's it. So then they would name their branch. So mini beast example and then they hit the floppy disk so the orange button it'll do a nice little spinny savey savey um, and it grays out so they can only save one copy unless they make any further changes so really nice the children get that feedback that something's happening certainly in my classes when I was teaching they would keep clicking that save button uh, because it looks like nothing's happening um, so at least they get some feedback so that will save into their my files so you as a teacher can access that through the pupil files area so that's branching databases. Now we're going to have a quick look at JIT Mix. Um, so I probably shouldn't have closed JIT down. Um, this is an ebook creator. So I have tied this in with a maths um, focus. 
So you could do this for various aspects. Um, so you could create, I don't know, a shapes fact book. It could be a numbers fact book. Um, we've done one tied around the Titanic in this particular example, and this was a uh, chart that was created in database, which we're going to look at next. Um, so we exported that as an image and added it into JITMIX. So it has lots of nice cross curricular uses. So you can choose a page layout and various JIT tools. You can add content depending on the tool um, and add additional pages as and when necessary. You can also record audio for each page and then name the file and save. So let's have a look. So JITMIX is the last tab, it is kind of a grey black tab. Now JITMIX works just ever so slightly differently and it does take a little bit of forward thinking prior to creation. Um, and by that I mean you have to choose your page layout first of all. So we have four different page layouts as you can see. So you choose your page layout and then you have to think about which tool you want to use. So there are seven tools within JIT. So there's Write, made for writing, Paint for paintings, Turtle, which is your coding, Chart for creating charts, Pictogram for creating pictograms, animations and branching database. OK, so for example, maybe let's add in that branching database that we've just created. So I then use these arrows. OK, so I'm going to find a purple page. So that is a branch page now. OK, so that will only allow me to add in branch items. Same as if I wanted this page layout, I would click the arrows to find my branch. OK, so let's add my branch. So I can add, I can just do all the content that we've just done so I could create um, a brand new branch from this page if I wanted to. Alternatively, you've got these two buttons at the top here, okay, and it's this one, which I'm going to zoom in, this little green folder button that allows you to load content that you've made in the standalone tools. So because I've made that branch in my in JIT branch, I can click on this button and there is our mini beast branch that we've just created. And you can see this is going to show me just all the branches that I have made. So there's the Christmas one that I did last year. Um, and various, there's the guess who one that we've created. Now, what's also nice is as a teacher, you do have access to the pupil files. So this is a great way of creating collaborative class ebooks, for example. So maybe, you know, you've got um, each child has created a Christmas picture in paint. So you could load a paint page and then add um, each pupil's content to a, a page. Um, so that's another way of doing it. So you could create a collaborative branching database ebook. OK, but I'm going to add in that branching database that we've just created. And then the children could analyze that data. So they could say um, today in maths, we looked at branching databases dot dot dot. OK, obviously they could explore that a little further and then they can add additional pages okay so I click the add page now this time I might have done um, a writing document about um, mini beasts so it's a really nice way of tying in making topic books okay um, you could keep it just simply maths so it could add in chart or pictogram um, I'm going to load in I'm going to see what I've got I don't know if I've got any mini beast writing should have checked this beforehand. I'm sure I do somewhere. There we go. OK, and then I could add another page. And this time I might have a pictogram around mini beasts. And again, you click on that little green load button if you've already made it in pictogram or you can make it straight onto this page. Let's find a mini beasts. There we go pictogram and there we have our mini beast topic book now so I can rename that same as we did with JIT branch you click the save button you get the savey savey um, and the save button will grey out uh, so the children know that it is saved and you can feed that back and they can add some text into this box here so it's a great way of creating um, maths topic books um, there is I've got an example shapes, I think I've called it. 
Here we go. So 3D Shapes book. So this is made in JIT Mix. 3D Shape Facts book. And then they've added, this is a paint page. So they've added a cuboid or a cube. Uh, and they've added some facts as writing underneath. So that's just a nice example. Then we've got spheres. You could have it as a 2D, 2D shape book. You could have it as a, I don't know, a fractions book, <laughs> whatever you want to create. So that is JIT Mix. Very versatile. Now we're going to look at database. Um, and in particular, we are going to focus on the Titanic database. Um, there is a Titanic database activity in the library. So I know Titanic is a very popular topic in Northern Ireland. Um, so that is geared towards your P5, 6 and 7s, I would say. So I will show you the database in a second. I'm just going to show you how database works at creating your own database first. Um, so it's a fantastic resource. You can create your own databases, which you can make them solo activities or you can make them collaborative so students can input into the same database. There are pre-populated or example databases available to use and we have added to those recently. And you can manipulate and analyze the data into a visual format so you can create charts um, and you can filter according to keyword and that kind of thing. So database is found within J2 data, which is here. Um, and you can see we've got picture and chart, which is suitable for your key stage one students. But we're going to look at database. So this is a brand new database. Um, so if you wanted to create your own, you can. So you've got your field name type with a default and then units. So, for example, I might want to just create a um, database of pupil information. OK, so you can change the chart, uh, the field type. So there are various field types to choose from. Obviously, because we're, we're creating a pupil name field, we want to keep that as text. OK, but those are the different fields that you can choose from. And then we don't need a unit for that. And we can add in another field. So this time we might want height. OK, so we know height isn't text. We need number. So we would choose the number type. And then you can add in the units. We might want that in centimetres. And again, we can add another field name. Um, and this time we might have fave uh, food. Now, when you are asking for a certain something, um, we can offer a list. OK, if you leave it as text, that's fine. But what you might find is some children add pizza and you're going to end up with 100 different answers. Some children might spell things differently. For example, favourite subject, they might add um, PE or they might add football or they might add playtime. You want to give them a list they can choose from. So I personally would choose list here. And that is where the default comes in because it offers you the different um, lists that we can offer. So we could add pizza. See, if they spell it incorrectly, uh, it might have fruit. Um, all the healthy things, obviously. Um, and then we might add, um, I don't know, burger. OK, and one more field and we might have age. OK, and again, that's going to be a number. OK, and then we can go to the form. So it's going to prompt you to save this. So we're going to have pupil info. November 24, there we go, and save that. So that then will allow you to look at the form. So this is where we can input data. So we've defined the record by defining all those fields. Um, and this is where either you can input this data you could have the children coming up to your device and inputting a record each. If you want to make it collaborative, that's when we need to think about sharing it. And to do that, we're going to click on this share button up here. And we can share with anybody. So you can use this drop down menu here at the edge, this little blue box. You could share with your class. Um, you can set up teaching classes. So maybe you've got um, smaller groups of students within your maths group. So you can set up a teaching class. There is a video on how to do that on our YouTube channel. Um, you can share with individual users. So maybe you've just got you want this being completed by two or three students. So you could select those students. So Harry can input into that. And we might have Lottie as well. So they might be working in a group of two. Or 
you can share with your class. So in the all classes area, you'll find your class. So I'm going to share that with my class one. There we go. OK, now what you will need is I don't remember which one is, um, if you want them to input data. You need to lock in contributor mode. So that means the children can input data into that particular form then. OK, so when we go to the form, they can add data. And they can hit save and that's going to add that data in for them. So let's go Lottie. She might be I don't know, 110 centimetres. She might have favourite fruit. She might be age nine and then she can hit save and that is going to save into that um, table. So we can see there's that table. She's uh, and as we get more and more data, it will show us um, side by side. So that's how we can create our own database. OK, um, so that's a very worthwhile activity. There are, as I said, some examples. So examples you can find here. But you can also from the J2 data homepage, there's also that button there. That's explore examples. So they both lead to exactly the same area. Um, We've got various templates to choose from. I did think we put some extras in. Um, so there's some example branching pictogram, branching database, pictogram chart um, and vote activities. But there's also countries, online shop, mini beasts. So that's a nice one to start with, with maybe some of your younger students, because there's only 13 pieces of data in there. There is a pupils database ready to go. So if you wanted to do that activity we've just looked at, but you don't want to set up your own, um, you can just use that instead. Dinosaurs, toy shop, and if you wanted 271,000 pieces of data, uh, there's the Olympics uh, competitors um, from over 120 years. So there you go. But we're going to have a look at Titanic passenger list. So this data is historically correct. Uh, so it gives a nice real world context for the students to understand why we use databases, um, what data looks like, how we can manipulate that data. Um, and then how I would teach this personally is I'd set certain challenges for the students. So, for example, I would say um, how many people on board were called George, for example. So I can pretty much guarantee 95% of your class are going to use this arrow and they're going to click through all 1300 records uh, to find all the Georges, which isn't efficient in the least. And depending on how mean you want to be, you, you can stop them at any point. If you wanted to use that as some marking time, feel free. <laughs> uh, but that's when you would introduce keyword searching. So we've got this bar at the top here. And that's when you would introduce the keyword, which is going to be George. I don't even know if we've got any Georges on board. There we go. So we've got 34 Georges on board. So we've refined that from 1300 or over 1300 records to 34. So this still isn't the most efficient way to view this particular piece of data, um, because even when we click through the records. Um, and you can see that's not actually a George uh, because she is extra information. She's the maid to Mrs. George Dunton. Um, so we can look in the table view now. And that's going to give us more of an information here. So we can see that actually only the ones highlighted are going to be George. Um, so we can expand this search now because that isn't actually um, correct. So I would do that for a few things, you know, ask them um, how many people on board would call Harry, how many people boarded in Southampton, how many people were in the first class, because all of those will be keyword searches that you can you can get them doing. OK, so let them practice a little bit. Then I would start saying, so for example, this, we want to know how many people on board were called George. So we can actually make more of an advanced search. So to do that, I'm just going to show you this um, little magnifying glass here. OK, now this allows us to make these searches a lot more precise. So I want to know how many people were called George. So I want to refine it to first name. And I want the first name value to be equal to, and that's where I'm going to type George. Okay, so actually we can see that 
first name, George, there's six people. OK, now you can do that for things like um, how many children were on board. So for that, let's get rid of that. You would have age is equals to or less than 18, for example, hit enter. And that's now showing us that we've got 230 children on board. OK, and then you can keep going. So you can start adding and or. Um, as well as. Each search so we can add. An and so I might want to know how many boys were on board. So for this, you would then refine. So we've got age. So we know age is under 18, but we want the gender. To be equals to. Male. OK, so that's showing us how many boys were on board, which is 125. OK, so I would just give them a lot of questions and that's where that will tie in with this particular sheet because those questions are pre-formulated. The children can click on them and they can add their answers and then hit save. They can even come up with their own questions for the for the database. OK, um, now I'm just going to delete out these searches. So that is keyword and advanced searching but you've also got the chart so this is where we can create some visual format of the data so i'm going to tag uh, let's go for class along the x-axis so i can see how many of each class were on board and i'm still got george there we go let's get rid of the george search where is that george search? That should not be showing that. Let's refresh that page. Let's try again. That's better. I don't know why it was holding on to that George keyword search. Um, so we can see there how many people on board are in each class. OK, we've got different chart types, so we can look in a bar chart. We can pull those pieces apart. You can change the color of those charts. Um, and there are five different charts to choose from. And you can also group these. So I might want to group whether they survived or didn't. And that's going to give me some really nice data there and some quite interesting data. Actually, when we looked at the number of the first class that were on board, you could see that they were in the minority, but actually of the survivors, they were the majority, whereas the third class were the majority of people on board, but actually the people that fell victim. They were um, it was very disproportionate. Now the children can save these uh, charts. So this button down here, bottom right with the um, camera, they can save that as an image. So that will save just that chart ready to be used in other um, tools. OK, so if I go to my my mm, let me close these tabs down. Um, if I go to my my files here, you can see there is that chart. So I could print that out. I could use that in a JIT mix document. I could use that in a J2 create document. Um, so that is how you can use it in other areas. OK. So that is database. I'm rapidly running out of time. I'm going to skip over J2 code logo. This is a bit of a tenuous link to the maths curriculum. However, there are some elements of mathematical concepts such as axes, angles and lengths that you can add in to logo. So please have a look at it. It looks scary to start with. It's really not. There is a live lesson that I delivered. In fact, I think there's at least one, if not two live lessons where we look at logo um, and incorporating angles. Um, I think we did one for creating regular polygons and I'm pretty sure we did one for spirograph or something similar or maybe it was letters. I don't know. I've done too many. Um, so have a look for that on the um, YouTube channel and you can follow along. So that's a great way of upskilling yourself as well as your students. Um, J2Create has some measuring tools built into it. Um, so these are two example activities that we have that are in the library. Um, so J2Create is the new name for J2E5. Um, so if you're familiar with that tool, um, you can use these. So if I just, this is a J2E, uh, J2Create page. And you'll notice here at the top of my page, my little compass. 
So that then has these three tools. So we have a ruler, a protractor, and a compass. I won't zoom out for some reason. There we go. So I can click on that and that's going to add that into that page. So I can draw my own triangles for my students and then I can get them to change to check the angles of things. As I said, there are there is pre-made content in the library ready for you to set, which I'm going to show you in a second. So please have a look for those. Now, J2 PDF, this allows you to make existing worksheets fully interactive. So this is great if you've got things like SATS revision papers. I'm sure as a teacher, you've probably got folders and folders on your desktop of resources that you traditionally would print out. I used to, I've lost many teaching hours just standing by the photocopier, generally between eight and half past eight. Um, waiting for my printouts. Um, so this is kind of a, a digital version of this. So it saves you from printing out. So it's going to save you some money um, and it makes it fully interactive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up J2 PDF and then I'm going to open up my hard drive and I've got it on my desktop in my maths folder. So I've got a perimeter worksheet that I've already got saved. So what I can do is I can just drag that PDF onto this drop box here. And it's going to stitch that worksheet onto a J2 create page. OK, so my kids can click anywhere and they can start typing. So to share this with my students, I need to save it. So I'm going to say perimeter worksheet. Now, the bigger the worksheet, the longer that's going to take. So this is a multi page worksheet. Luckily, it's only two pages. There we go. So page one, page two. Um, just be aware if you're doing like a SAT revision paper where there's 20 pages, that does take quite a little while. Um, and then we can share this particular resource. So if I click on these little two people and again, the same as we did with our database earlier, we can share that with our class and now they can access that. So when they come to uh, log in, they go to the shared files area. They open this up, they can click and they can start typing. And don't forget the units. Uh, so they can have four by four equals 16. OK, and then they hit save and that saves into their my files area. So that's just a way of creating um, your existing worksheets and making them interactive. OK, there is a YouTube video on how to do that. Now I'm going to fly through these um, library resources now. Please feel free to ask any questions because we are coming up to the end of the session. Um, but the library is a great resources you can share with your students. Um, so we've got hundreds, tens and units activities. Um, there are addition activities of so pre-made worksheets. So we've got column addition. We've also got um, some symbol addition activities. Uh, subtraction activities. I was going to add one in and I can't remember what I was going to add in, but there you can see there's some nets there as well. Multiplication. So we've got draggable activities, um, factor eruptions. We've got long multiplication, short multiplication. Division activities. Uh, so bus stop method in there and you can add in your own success criteria. Number problems, so we've got some code breaking activities and some um, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, we've got fractions, so we have added some new ones. So colouring in according to rounding decimals. I've also done a fractions one. Um, this is decimals. So who won the final gymnastics floor? So that's adding, uh, adding decimals, I think, and then some fraction resources. Algebra resources, that was took me hours to create that so I will try and create some more but they take some time with a lot of them um, we've got geometry so we've got some symmetry activity so carol diagrams in there lines of symmetry so adding in types of triangles and how many lines of symmetry creating a symmetrical resource so that's quite tricky actually so that'll take them some time if you want to set them off doing that measuring as I said, we have got activities ready to go in there. So measuring using centimetres and millimetres and also angles. And then money. So we've got some uh, menus, world word money problems and estimating cost. And then some 
activities that I couldn't shoehorn in anywhere else. So comparing numbers, Roman numerals, because I know that's on the curriculum, and also the mean, median and range of decks of carbs. So there we go. So I thought I would just showcase those to you. Um, I can't believe I've still got Twitter in here. We are on X and Facebook. Uh, just look for us just too easy or just too easy underscore com. We do have a brand new teachers group on um, Facebook as well. So please feel free to join that. We share plans, activities. There's a competition on there at the moment, Christmas competition that you can enter. Um, so just put a request in to join that. That is just too easy teachers group. And then we're also on YouTube, so Just Too Easy TV. This and all of our other training and live lessons are on there. So thank you ever so much for giving up your precious time. I hope you've enjoyed the session. Um, I am going to stop the recording now, but we hope to see you for another session soon. Um, but please feel free to add any questions into the chat. So thank you very much.